Okay, in this video I'm going to be explaining how to install Pop OS, uh, or basically any other GNU slash Linux distribution onto a Mac computer. Although the process should be basically the same for any other system. I also intend to explain how to set up Proton with Steam on it afterwards because one of my viewers was trying to use or play Windows games on a Mac which don't work and the Proton compatibility layer also doesn't work on Mac OS. It's far more supported on Linux. So I'm just go to their website pop.system76.com download I would recommend just to download this one. The LTS will have more um, stability, but it may also be behind in receiving new features. This one is basically just the latest version. You will also want to install something you can use to flash USB drives so that you can install it. I recommend Etcher. It's really simple. Um, it's at balena.io. Just a search for Etcher should bring it up. And the install process should be really simple once this downloads. So if you're on Mac OS, just open the DMG file. Allow it to verify and everything. Then just move it to Applications, and it will copy over. Then you can eject that. Then you can run Etcher. So the image is now downloaded. That's in pop OS Intel .iso. It says it's about 2.42 gigabytes, so you'll want a USB drive that's probably at least 3 or 4 gigabytes. I'm using this USB drive right here, which should be more than enough with 32 gigabytes, but you will need a USB drive. Just insert the USB drive into the computer. Just insert the drive into the USB port of the computer. On the lap laptop style computers, they'll just be in the side. If you're on an I iMac, they'll be in the monitor, I believe. Once the drive has been inserted, you can just select it. Uh, Etcher will usually only detect the correct one if you only have one drive plugged in. Others will list incorrect things like your hard drive. But then you just want to flash that, enter your password to give it the permissions, and allow it to happen. If you are running Linux right now and you're watching this for some reason, just use the dd command. Um, but that's a topic for another video. By the way, you might want to make a backup for the Mac OS installer. You can find these in the App Store. Um, if not, you can go to the website, <clears throat> the Apple website, and they'll just tell you, they'll give you links in the App Store where to download these specific versions. Um, yeah, if you get that and you have a second USB drive, that may be a good idea, especially if you're not planning to dual boot, but if not, you can probably get it from someone else. Okay, once this installs, you get the flash complete notification, and it also tells you that the disk inserted was not readable by the computer. Just ignore that. It means that it's been done properly, because now it's in a format that can be booted from, rather than just being readable files. 
So what you'll want to do before booting into the USB drive, go into Disk Utility and just open that like any other application. It appears that after running first aid, there's corruption that needs to be repaired. I'm going to try that in the recovery as it says, but most people should not need this to be done. If you're having that issue, just go to restart and you'll want to hold down Command R for recovery. And it usually takes a bit longer to load that for some reason. So I'll just allow that to happen. Once you're in the recovery, just select Disk Utility and run First Aid on the HDD. It now claims to be restored, so I'm going to partition right here. Partition. You should be able to do this in the normal system. I just happen to be in recovery right now. So select FAT. That should be easier for the system to deal with. Here. First, make it like 20 gigabytes or so. If you want more, like if you're going to play large games or a lot of games, select something larger. Give it a name. Make it FAT and apply. Then partition. The disk utility automatically closed itself, so I'm going to assume that it partitioned pro properly. So yeah, there is now a pop partition. It's APFS for some reason, but the pop drive should be able to handle it. I'm in the disk utility again. Select partition once more partition and make a new one that is 500 megabytes megabytes really small partition right there i'll just name it boot and the format shouldn't really matter pop can handle that select partition now that the partition has been created, I'm going to boot into the Pop! OS USB once again. Turn that on, hold down Alt. Wait a few seconds for the EFI drive to appear. Then press Enter to select that, or Return, whatever. Then press Enter again to select Pop! OS and just give it a few minutes to boot up. It will basically just have a terminal screen, uh, most of which is systemd, handling like all the boot processes and stuff. Uh, it may freeze at times, just allow it to load. Again, give it a few minutes to boot up. Our mouse has appeared, and we are in the Pop! OS graphical environment. This is the GNOME desktop environment. Looks pretty similar to Mac OS. Just select uh, English if that's your native language. United States for the like variant. I'm just going to select mostly the defaults. And then if you want to do a clean install that erases everything and just to replace it with Pop! OS, select that. I'm not going to be doing that. I'll be doing a custom so I can dual boot. Then you want to select this larger one we created for your root drive. Uh, it may be a different size for you if you um, selected it to be different. And then you want to use the smaller one for boot. And we want to format that just erase everything that's there and make it the right version.
then erase and install led to led to its thing pop os uh apparently is really good at having pre-configured things that just work so it will probably handle the dual booting process and just work once it's installed okay it looks like the install is complete i'm just going to restart the device and let's see how it works if it works I'm curious to see what the booting will look like. I'm also going to unplug the USB now since that shouldn't be needed. It's welcoming me, I guess. Uh, and now it wants me to choose everything. You can choose the settings accordingly. Uh, I'm on the east coast of the US, so I'm just going to choose New York for a time zone. That's usually what I pick. That should work. I'm not actually in New York, by the way. But that's the right time zone. Uh, full name. Okay. Usually it wants you to put in actual information, but I guess not. I'll make a super secure password. Okay, I guess I have to put in an actual password. And now it says it's all done, and we can start using Pop OS. Okay, so I was actually unable to get Wi-Fi working, so I can't install a screen recorder. Uh, on newer Mac devices, it's uh, unlikely that it will work with Wi-Fi of the box, just with proprietary drivers and stuff. Um, however, if you have... An older one that works, good for you. You're lucky. You should just be able to open the settings. I think you press, yeah, you press command or super key or window key, whatever's on your device. And you should just be able to search settings. That's where you'd configure all stuff. If you're using ethernet, that is a wired connection, which I don't have access to. Um, that should also just work out of the box. Um, now, applications are... Okay, so they call it Pop Shop. Um, you just open that if you want to install things. You can probably just search Steam. It looks like it's actually cached in my connection. But that's how you'd install Steam. Uh, from here on out, it's going to be mostly the same between distributions, so I'm going to try um, on my other Linux machine to show the rest. Okay, so I'm now in Steam. I installed it just for the occasion. Now, if you don't currently use Steam, I encourage you to not use it. Either play uh, free Libre games exclusively, or at the very least use uh, an alternate uh, to Steam, such as GOG which only release uh, non-DRM games. They don't force you to use their client, etc. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, to enable Proton, go into the settings, which is in Steam settings, and then go to Steam Play, and enable Steam Play for supported titles. Uh, there are lots of games. You can check out ProtonDB.com, which is right here. Uh, you'll see there are lots of different games supported. Um, but you can also enable it for uh, all other titles, which will basically just try to run them, even if they haven't been officially tested. I've found that this does work, kind of. And then just restart Steam. Now, back onto ProtonDB. They'll give, like, different ratings. One sec, let me log in. They'll give different ratings. For example, uh, this has a platinum rating. It works perfectly. People will talk about how well it works, etc. Okay, you'll see there are only 
a few here that are supported. Um, oh, this one says, this one isn't listed as one of the supported ones, so we'll just try it to see if it runs. It's only 99 megabytes. Of course, Proton has to download first. Everything has now been downloaded, so we'll just open this to play. It says it's going to use Steam Play, and let's see how this works. Okay, so we now have the game. Let's run this display. All right. Not actually going to look at the controls. I'm just going to let it happen. Okay, seems simple enough. Okay, so the music for this part was really loud and probably copyrighted, so I muted that part. This is an overdub. Um, it looks like for this game, that wasn't a crash, it actually is exits if you go to that specific area I went into. I'm currently relaunching the game, and after a few seconds it loads. And that's the uh, launcher for the game. The resolution was weird, so I didn't know what to do there. And then shows the controls and yeah you're just a ball and you jump fairly simple that concludes the video i hope you found it helpful